Welcome to Hidden Squids Gaming. Today I'm taking a Crusader, a Man at Arms, a Vestal, and an Arbalist into a Battle Room, Short Dungeon, and the Ruins. Before I get into any major fights here, this is a very short dungeon. I actually didn't have a lot of fights, and the really one of the only two fights I had went miserable, and we're going to kind of talk about maybe how to avoid that in the future. But again, my current party setup, you're going to kind of get an idea that I had the Arbalist to hit the back rows. However, the Arbalist isn't particularly strong because I didn't give her a lot of damage items or marks to function off of, and that was my fault. This... This was not a case of RNG, this was definitely party error. The reason why I'm posting this video is, is because I need to post my mistakes and things that we can improve on out in the community, because if I only ever show you how to do things right, you're never going to know what not to do wrong, so to say. And if you can learn from a couple errors I do, or you can see what I tried and didn't work and you have a different idea, that's how we learn, that's how we improve. I still try to mix and match pieces together. So I really don't want to keep doing the same over and over again. I get enjoyment out of finding new strategies, new people, I find new skills I really like with other heroes. I thought this party would maybe work. Add a little bit of stress heal on the Crusader and the Arbalist, and the Arbalist can do a decent amount of damage. However, I don't think the Arbalist could do enough damage in the ruins for the monsters we typically face. I think the Arbalist could function really well with the Bounty Hunter, which I should have maybe had out for the Man at Arms instead. I think the Man at Arms may have been the problem. I like the fact that he can repost and buff the party, but I needed someone who could maybe pull an individual, mark it, and have the Arbalist fight as well. Also on the Arbalist, I didn't really put on some of her better skills, which really hurts me later. I talked over that Maggot fight, because um, I don't think you guys really need to know how to kill three Maggots effectively, so I hope you don't mind. The big fight in this video is going to be with a bone bearer. I'm just going to kind of sum it up now. When you go into the ruins in the champion level dungeon, make sure you know how to take care of bone bearers. Make sure you don't take a party composition that cannot effectively kill a bone bearer. Because situations like this can happen. You get two very heavily armored individuals in the front, and then you get a guy in the back. And if you only have an individual or two who can hit the back row you're in for a really horrible time. And that's what happens to me. And this is why I said I think a bounty hunter instead of the Men at Arms would have been better, because I could have pulled at least the Bone Bearer forward for my Crusader to do what he normally does, which is his Holy Damage with Holy Lance. Even if I didn't want to do the marking or pulling strategy, I could have at least had someone who could bounce the Crusader back and forth, maybe someone like a Shield Breaker or a Highwayman. Well, Highwayman would not bounce him back enough, but what I'm trying to get at is I could at least try to Holy Lance once or twice. However, this current lineup, I'm really forced to only hit the front two people and get criticals, while I hope my Arbalist can do massive damage to the Bone Bearer, which is just 8 to 14 with the dodge is just not going to happen quickly. And I do try to finish him, but obviously get a dodge there. I don't think this party composition is exactly terrible. I think it could function in maybe other dungeons without someone who can re-summon individuals. I just don't think this is an appropriate lineup to bring into a champion level runes. As I'm going to mention, he gets revived and all that. I have to depend on criticals to clear out people in the front before I get the bone bearer killed. Which is a huge issue because I just can't kill the bone bearer. I don't have anyone that can do it. And I also put on illumination instead of judgment on the vestal. Which means even my Vestal can't help out, and the Bone Bearer has such a high stun resistance, you're never gonna stun him. This was just a lot of flaws that my party had, and I should have seen coming before I even went in here. That, where I should have gave trinkets to my Arbalist that give massive damage increases. Because I just she just could not do the damage or really hit hard enough. We're at turn 3, we have another Unholy Rally, I didn't get another critical to kill a guy in the front. This party does have pretty good sustainability though, and that's the only reason why I don't really lose anybody, is they can dish the damage out to me, but I can pretty much take it, because both of my individuals in the front have above 50 HP. I have 66 on the Crusader, on the Man at Arms himself. That's a lot of HP to get through. Even these 15 criticals and stuff would like take people down to half health on other low individuals. Not these guys, they just keep taking, and now you see a couple criticals start clearing this fight up. But this has been a failure of a fight pretty much all around. 
I took a lot of physical damage, but I have a Vestal with really good healing trinkets on. I actually don't even care about that. Because now I'm at the end, and I can just keep protecting. And I also have the bandages on the Arbalist. So my positive of this party is, they can, they're very durable. And it's pretty much the only reason why I could actually do this Bone Bearer fight with how bad it went. Two unholy rallies of guys in the front with the protection, that's just, it's just bad. I should have had at least another attack row diversity option, or an ability to pull him forward for my Crusader. The party did not synergize well for back row compositions. If I was to redo this, I think I'd bring a Bounty Hunter along, because once again, they have a lot of the same, they have a pretty high HP pool as a man at arms but once again you can use the come hither ability and not only will that mark the individual for the arbalist to do more damage so that's a pretty good part as well and even if they don't get pulled as i said they'll still get marked back there i just believe it would have been a more effective option to pick also the good news was this was a really short dungeon there's actually only two battle rooms but i'm actually going to go pick a fight out in the hallway after this room as well this lineup is going to be much more doable. I, mean, I already have Illumination. He dodges. It would have brought him out, which was kind of why I brought it along, but that's okay. I somewhat run into the same issue, once again, with the Blood Letter here, that I can't attack the guy behind him. And that's just going to resurface all of those other problems I had. However, once again, we have the Vestal Heals to heal everybody if we take massive amounts of damage. I am going to flare just to get that guy out of stealth because I really don't like all the stealth bonuses they get. And I'm also going to add repose to my man at arms now so I can hit the guy who's going to use blanket fire as you're about to see. 10 damage is still 10 damage, especially since I can't hit the back row hard, but now I've set him up in realistic territory to die to one shot from the Arbalist without a whole bunch of damage increases. I do like the repose on the man at arms. And you could even possibly bring a, you could even bring in a Highwayman who functions very well with a Crusader. I personally do that a lot, so I wanted to try to get out from my natural tendencies. However, a Highwayman is excellent because he can repose, he can move back and forward, he can hit a decent amount of rows as well, depending where he sits in your party. Highly recommend Highwaymen with a Crusader. As we see here again, finishes him off with a critical strike. The blanket fire is more detrimental than it is really painful at this point. And with the other guys almost so dead, this is going to be a pretty easy wrap up on the fight. I haven't actually accrued that much stress damage, and if you watch the other parts in this video, I took a lot of criticals on me. This party is very durable. It can keep stress pretty low, unless what I did get lucky on is I actually didn't fight any bone royalty. If there was a couple of Bone Royalty in this dungeon, I probably would have suffered because I couldn't have hit and killed them quick enough, and they would have just kept putting all the stress damage on me. I am actually going to try one of these because it was only two fights and I really want to show another fight. If you don't have the Crimson Court DLC, these guys will come into your regular dungeons once you start the Crimson Court. If you don't like what you see here, do not start the Crimson Court early. I just wanted to get one more fight in there, show what this party can do to, I would call maybe average lineups. Now there's only three guys, so this party really excelled here. I'm glad this fight really pulled through in the end. I know I say that as soon as I get a miss. As I've said before, I think this party could work. I think the Arbalist does work. I just only gave her a health item and a scout item. I think if I would have given her a damage item or even an accuracy item, certain fights would have been less painful for me personally. Just some tips to take away. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this party. I hope you manipulate it just a bit to make it work for you. Like and subscribe below.